What's up, ladies and gentlemen? It's me, Walter Tuomi, representing Neo Defective Gaming, and I am your host, aka Neo Defective. So, thank you guys for tuning in. Today, on the news agenda, we have four items, all right? So, to start everything off, we got bad news. One of those being no Nintendo Switch price cut for the US, which sucks. There's been a price cut that was reported. But guess what? We're not getting one. But to round things off and equal out the scales, balance out the scales, if you will, the PS5 is going to be getting an update that lets users add more space for games via SSD. Finally, it should have been done from the beginning, but as with all rollouts, things get updates and patches that allow us to make these consoles better. And then over time, they learn better and then they become PlayStation 5s point twos in which they're smaller slimmer and add more space and are more quieter also we got titanfall 2 which was abandoned by ea and then things got weird apparently that coming from ign but to start things off let's go down the news rabbit hole for this week ending this is friday september 18th 2021 let's get it from th all right this week on september 15th from GameSpot by one Eddie Markuch. He reports that no Nintendo Switch price cut is gonna be coming to the US. So Nintendo cut the price of the console in Europe and Canada, but no plans to drop in the US, which sucks. <laughs> uh, for those out there that are actually seeking a Nintendo Switch, but have no worries. If you're here, you're in the right place, and I'll explain that at the end of the video. Nintendo has cut the price of the Nintendo Switch in Europe, but the same discount will not be offered in the United States, a spokesperson told Axios Steven Totilo, and that the price cut was specifically for Europe. There's no plans, at least right now, to offer a similar price drop for the US. And this is in quotes, the trade price adjustment is for the European region only. There's no plans to change the manufacturer's suggested retail price for any Nintendo Switch model in the US, end quote, and that was one Nintendo. A price cut for the Switch also went into effect in Canada, but no such discount will be available for US shoppers. The console will still be sold for $300. Explaining the price cut for Europe, Nintendo said the decision came down to currency exchange rates and the forthcoming launch of the Switch OLED model in October. Again, this is going to be coming full circle, guys, so stay with me at the end of this video. It's not tough to see when Nintendo isn't discussing the Switch in the US. Okay, anyways, there's a lot of things going on. Uh, take this as a grain of salt, right? Like, of course, they're going to be dropping the price very soon. When the when the OLED comes out, which is going to be October 8th for the U.S., things are going to change, guys. It's not going to stay this price forever. I mean, there's there's a light at the end of the tunnel, right? There's hope at the end of the galaxy, as one Princess Leia might have said before she died way, way, way later in other movies. And that movie sucked. Anyways, let's get on to the next article. All right. So this one over here is at Ars Technica, and it's all about the PlayStation 5 update finally coming that lets users add more space to the video games or for the games or for other shenanigans and porn that we won't discuss here over at Near Defected Gaming because we are a family channel. So the most wanted feature from July beta gets a public release soon, and this one is from Steve Hask, again, over at Ars Technica. Players will be able to add specific M.2 SSDs to the PS5 with a new system update rolling out tomorrow. This article was posted on September 14th, 2021, and that's two months after a beta that featured that option was made available to users who signed up. I, I better turn on my, my PlayStation Better turn my PlayStation right now. As detailed in a post on the PlayStation blog, the update gives users the option to increase the PS5's overall storage capacity by installing a PCIe 4.0 M.2 SSD ranging from 250 gigabytes to 400 to, poof, to four terabytes. 400 terabytes. Imagine, guys. That fits certain technical and dimensional requirements. Once the M.2 drive is installed, the new storage space can be used to copy, download, update, and play PS4 and PS5 games as well as media applications. <laughs> Which is great news. I mean, we've been adding, asking for that since the beginning of the PS5 launch. And this was one of the main issues that was plaguing the PS5 at launch, which was that there was no support to upgrade your storage capacity, which is a problem. That's pretty much standard for all media devices that come out and, and i mean the only ssds that you could use were sony brand and not other market products such as you know like samsung and uh any other like wd and things like that now with this there are going to be some specifications 
So as the public release of the beta version of the update that was offered starting in July, the specifications for usable M.2 SSDs appeared to be unchanged. Single and double-sided M.2 devices can be used and Sony recommends a minimum sequential speed of at least 5,500 megabytes a second. Compatible devices also require a heat dissipation component with a cooling structure. In physical terms to fit into the PS5's SSD slot, a drive's width cannot exceed 25 millimeters, which includes space for a heatsink. Meanwhile, length can run from 30 to 110 millimeters depending on the model. Users have the option to either to use a drive with a heatsink built in or to install their own, though Sony specifies the PS5's housing only allows for a total depth of both SSD and heat dissipation of up to 11.25 millimeters. While the company doesn't currently have a list of specific recommended compatible M.2 models, I think now there is a list out there you can possibly find since this mod, uh, this article was posted. It states that the majority of M key numbers 2230, 2242, 2260, 2280, and 22110 will fit into the PS5 storage expansion bay. A couple of standard disclaimers apply just like during the beta players running games from an ssd may not have an identical experience to playing from the ps5 standard internal storage regardless of a device's sequential read speed sony also doesn't guarantee that every m.2 ssd with these specifications will work it's probably best to stick to well-known names like the ca and wd black which is what i wanted i talked about earlier which both offer built-in low profile profile models and a range of storage capacities. Samsung is also a reliable choice, though it should be noted that as of this writing, the manufacturer doesn't offer any compatible devices with built-in heat sinks. This is great news. This is what we've been asking for. Sony's listening. They knew that that was a problem, I'm sure, at the beginning, and they were just trying to push as many Sony brand SSDs as they could. That's pretty much the bottom line here. So they bit the bullet as they always were going to have to anyway. I don't think they bit the bullet per se. As they knew that they were going to do this, they were just trying to hold off for a while. So the update comes in. Everybody should be golden now. Go get an update, your storage, your PS5s, to play more games because games are amazing, guys. That's why we're here. That's why you're here because we love games and we all like talking about the news and video games industries. All right, let's get this going. The next article. All right, so this one is a deep dive all right guys this is from ign by luke winkle seems ign was doing some sleuthing some actual journalism and this journalism was all about the titanfall 2 game and its online servers that were abandoned by ea and then how things got weird now i'm not going to go over this entire thing because this is actually a lengthy article it goes on to say that there was a 32 page exhaustive pdf document called operation red tape with the headline discussing throwing leads about Jeannot to an IGN journalist. It was uploaded by the team behind the website SaveTitanfall.com on August 6th as one of the definitive conclusions on one of the strangest stories in video games. Who was killing Titanfall? Who is Jeannot? Why hasn't Respawn done anything to stop it? All right, so they were doing some journalism, picking around, trying to find out what was going on, why Titanfall 2 was abandoned, okay? All right, so in this article, the, journal the journalist is actually talking about uh going to a discord transcript and it reads quote unquote should throw him the original leads about gene and that was a screenshot in the discord right and just below the brutal headline i felt a twinge in the bottom of my stomach they read the him apparently referred to the journalist and some if he was being you know a uh, hoodwinked it says quote would be nice at the very least to get the people who still think that's his real identity to shut up keck and quote, uh, he goes back into the timeline where Titanfall 2 was released in 2016. Great reviews. So it says it's frequently endorsed by FPS scholars and a devout fervent fan base. But uh, the hopes for to, to continue to cultivate the Titanfall franchise started to wane with the insurgent success of Apex Legends in 2018. And again, Apex Legends, also a fantastic game. That's the same universe as the Titanfall universe. A bit more comic-y though. So it's a little different. Uh, Team Fortress 2 had been infamously overrun by bots, which was pretty much a recipe for disaster once the game started getting its support from the developers. So in early 2021, reports started to proliferate about a hacker or a team of hackers who made it their mission to sabotage Titanfall 2, which they pretty much had been doing. Uh, motivations were ambiguous. Was the new power looking for internet stardom? Did, did they get off on the power? Did they carry some bizarre vendetta against Titanfall as a brand? 
no you, you, nobody knows the, 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 the that's what the article states right I think this is a great read it I mean you guys really want to go down and, and see what's going on with the fan base and see what's going on with Titanfall 2 okay so you made it to the end of the video as I'd hope that you would now remember I was trying to tie in that I was gonna be doing something a little different so to help me reach 1,000 subscribers I'm doing a stretch goal we're doing milestones now guys so me Walter Twomey representing Neo Defective Gaming got my hands on an HS70 wired gaming headset with Bluetooth it's a wired gaming headset with Bluetooth of course as you can see works with the PS5 works with Nintendo switch works works with the Xbox 360 controller Xbox X and S I'm sure you can chat and game simultaneously connect to wired gaming audio on switch PS5 PS4 Xbox series X and S Xbox one or PC and get Bluetooth audio on your mobile device including voice chat apps music or phone calls at the same time with up to 30 hours of battery life you can play long into the night without needing to stop and charge it comes with on ear volume and mute controls which you can enable on the fly adjustments without distracting you from your gaming you can also call the shots Fully detachable unidirectional microphone reduces ambient noise and is Discord certified. You guys can see that emblem right there for crystal clear communication and outstanding audio quality. It's superb quality sound, has custom tuned 50 millimeter neodymium. Neo, Neo. It's me, I'm Neo. Audio drivers deliver the range to hear everything you need on the battlefield. Enables Windows Sonic on PC for an immersive 360 degree audio experience that puts you right in the middle of the game. As you can see, we got a model doing her Discord thing while also connected to her Xbox controller and uh, just doing all sorts of good things. It has a nice, beautifully crafted measuring tool for our big and small heads. Crafted for comfort, built for battle, lightweight and durable aluminum, or as they say over in Europe, aluminum construction gives the HS70 Bluetooth years of longevity. You can also set up at your command using Corsair IQ software, which enables custom audio equalizer settings, mic volume control, and more when connected via USB. I have IQ. I use it. It's pretty good. Again, guys, help me get to 1000. I'm going to read a little script here. All right, guys, so for your entry, make sure you're subscribed to this channel and follow me on Twitter at Neo Defective. Remember, I'm here. I'm there. I'm everywhere. I'm at twitch.tv slash Neo Defective. You can also find me at Instagram at Neo Defective. And if you want to boost your chances to get the HS70, drop a comment on the first game you're going to play. The giveaway ends on October 8th, guys. Remember that. And that's when we're going to be also purchasing the Nintendo Switch OLED, which drops that day. We'll be getting it and giving out to another lucky subscriber. So hit that notification bell. Follow me on Twitter. Also, on that day, if we reach that milestone, you can watch me on Twitch doing the live giveaway. And then you can also sub there right now as I stream every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday during September where it's pretty much 70%. It's 20% off. So go hit me with the sub. And then if we can get to six more subs, I'll be doing a Pocky challenge, which is the super hot chip. And I'm going to burn my, my tonsils off and also poop fire. Thanks, guys. Tuning in. Help me get to 1,000. I know we can do it. I love you guys. Stay dirty, humans.